Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started and ask the Lord for His blessing. Go with you, he gets up with God now going. Mahan Elohim, when Gasta Danteska, Naski Yagalandi, which in Gasta. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, just continuing to bless us and be with us, message. Uh, continue to provide for us and uh, watch over us and guide direct us. Uh, Lord, we thank you and love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Kagan, that's impressive. Yeah, hey, look at I knew you, you smoked turkey, but man, that's. Hey, you did one in my clip the pedals on right there. Hey, girl, I need you. All right, Denise Taylor. Hi, here. Love you. Hey, Sylvia. No problem. Thank you. Hey, you're about that. Your breath off for you. Hey, he's here. Hey. Austin here. Keith Austin. They can't hear back there. Keith <laughs> Austin. Yes. I am here. Air conditioner. Here too. Yeah, I guess they can't Go hear. Here. Julia Cove. Here. Honey. Mike Dobbins. Here. Hayden Duffin. Honey. Rex Jordan. Here. Daryl Legs. Here. Wes Snowfire. Dora Petskowski? Here. Mike Samra? Here. Mary Beckershaw? Bonnie. Theo Smith? Here. Victoria Vesquez? Bonnie. Okay. Uh, Rex, would you move to approve the minutes from PAC yes. and regular yes. session, please? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve the minutes from both the June 15th PAC meeting and the June 25th regular Madam session. Chair. All those in favor? There's Aye. Aye. We, we got to get the volume up. All right, I'll put on my cheerleader voice. <laughs> I don't think that works in here. I can lift that off right there. We won't pay the AC off over here. Gail, can this be turned up just a little bit, this mic? Yeah, Eddie can turn it up. Where does it come out? I thought it was just on the... It's just on the video. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. So everybody else, right. okay. Thanks, better. Yeah. Thank you. Daryl's turning off the air. Well, let's just make this a quick meeting and we won't get overheated and uh, we'll just go with what we got. Okay, I do not see any of our um, reporters on video, probably because we are so far um, after time. What I would uh, recommend is that we go ahead and do our consent items if nobody cares. Because I just talked to Diane, I talked to Chuck Garrett this morning. I think everybody intended to be here for our benefit. You have on. They're oh, they're on. on. Yes. Uh, Chuck the report, Garrett. So. We take the red reports. Yes, ma'am. Um, would you like to go ahead and bring us up to date on what's going on at CMB? I'd be happy to. I'm hoping that my audio is uh, is clearing. Uh, you can hear me. Your audio is fine. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, as everyone knows, uh, since we last met, uh, we have reopened our facilities uh, across uh, across our nation and have all 10 facilities right now up, up and running. Uh, and we've been really focused on, on, on that primarily is to get those properties back up and running. But uh, equally, of course, is to uh, make sure that we're creating a workplace that is uh, as safe as possible for all of our employees, uh, whether it's in a gaming facility or in our other offices. So we continue to put uh, a lot of focus on um, just creating the right safety protocols for, for all of our uh, people. Now I've spoken to many of you all with uh, regarding you know, your concerns or what opportunities for us to be better and I appreciate all the input that I've received and, and it's very, very helpful. Uh, of course also we uh, focused on preserving cash and managing our liquidity 
as well as uh, maximizing our financial performance and also preparing for some multiple recovery scenarios. So that that has been the focus since uh, we last met. The details of our June financial performance uh, you should have uh, sort of been distributed earlier today. And uh, not surprising, uh, our, on our gaming side of our uh, business, uh, we have uh, we have had lower than anticipated results, you know, primarily because of our shutdown and also uh, just our consumers and our patrons' slow uh, return to uh, the, the public and feeling comfortable being in, in crowded uh, uh, public environments. So uh, we're we're continuing to work on that, trying to uh, and I think successfully. Uh, become the standard setter in our markets in terms of creating a safe place to have fun. And uh, that continues to be, uh, as, I, as I said, our, our focus. Uh, the Cherokee Federal, uh, that federal contracting side of our business has been, in fact, we, we second strongest we've ever had this last month. Uh, we continue to have great success there. The industry as a whole has uh, been very strong. We didn't see any slowdown in our government contracting uh, demand. So uh, we've continued to, to enjoy great success there. I think the you know longer term scenario, which uh, I'm spending a lot of my time thinking of, along with other members of the management team, is to what, what kind of recovery are we looking at? You know, once uh, obviously we have this the, the pandemic and the health uh, ramifications, but we also have uh, uh, economic and, and economy impacts uh, that will uh, will really dictate our future. I mean, it's no doubt that uh, uh, that uh, the, the short term uh, we are having to to be extremely uh, careful about what we're what we're doing but in the future I think there may be some opportunities for us to play offense and uh, we'll talk more about that as those opportunities present themselves um, but uh, currently you know what we're seeing is a suppressed consumer uh, demand and uh, and uh, severe you know, impact to our bottom line um, I cannot say enough about our teams uh, and the work that they have done. I know there was concern um, about the return to work and how our employees would embrace that, the fear that is natural when we're dealing with a, a pandemic of this nature. Uh, I just couldn't be prouder of the way our employees have leaned into it. I've been to virtually every property over the past uh, month and it's just uh, really uh, heartwarming to see uh, the uh, effort and the uh, energy that our, our employees are putting into the work. So I'm um, very, very proud. I think you all are too or would be if you, you, uh, if you got to see some of the things that I've seen really heartwarming. So I appreciate that effort. Um, I'm going to pause, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, and, and uh, make certain that I'm uh, leaving time for questions and addressing some of the uh, concerns or questions you guys might have. Uh, Councilor Duncan. Uh, Chuck, hey, it's uh, Kanan. I just want to uh, express uh, very, very deep gratitude for, uh, you know, the return to work deal. We got a lot of CNI employees there in, in uh, Stillwell. <coughs> I know there's some employees across the board, but um, you know that they let us know their concerns. Um, Sean and I both, and, and you were uh, not hesitant at all to, to hear those concerns and, and fully address them, and con and continue to do so. And I just want to thank you for that. It it makes it uh, much easier when we're all working together like that. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate the, the input that uh, both you and Councilor Frittman have provided. It's very helpful to all of us. Uh, I mean, we have the same goal, uh, 
and it's just uh, good to have the different perspectives uh, shared. So thank you. Councilor Dobbins? Yes, Chuck, uh, Councilor Dobbins. Do we still have employees uh, with unemployment and our supplemental pay that are making more money at home than they would at work? We have had all of our employees return to work with the exception of some of our cultural uh, employees of our cultural tourism employees uh, that are focused on museums and, and some of the other uh, cultural uh, highlights we have. Um, so that is uh, winding down. The uh, Another move that sort of accepts an exception is, are those employees that um, have positions. Uh, there are some of those employees that are on what is referred to as a partial furlough, where they are now making $11 an hour uh, back to work uh, because the tipped uh, component of their compensation is impossible to sort of forecast. What we've done is they, they have an $11 an hour uh, position up from normally a 6 to $7 an hour position that had tips on top. Uh, Those employees are uh, still eligible for a partial furlough. Uh, unless Congress extends the federal subsidy of the, uh, uh, of the unemployment uh, benefits that uh, were provided in the CARES Act, uh, those are set to expire at the end of July. So we'll see. There is some speculation that they'll extend that, but um, to my knowledge, they didn't do it today, and, and so it may, may happen later this week. Thank you, Jeff. But you know, it's, it's interesting. Just one last thought is is that we were, you know, all concerned that, gee, you know, I can make more money. Uh, uh, sitting on my couch and I, I can uh, at work and uh, in some cases uh, and truly uh, we really didn't see that uh, at all. We had people report to work as as requested and really leaned into it and, and that was uh, very gratifying. I just want to add that I was at Hard Rock last weekend and just kind of seeing how things were. And um, I was impressed with the cleaning protocols and the screening protocols and all of that. Um, I think if anybody had any doubts about gaming in a safe, clean environment, it wouldn't take them very long inside that property, at least, to have those fears. Um, you know, they would no longer be afraid. So they're doing a great job. Yeah, thank you. They, they really are. The teams are really doing uh, That's good to hear. jobs. So thank you. Yes, I want to compliment the uh, uh, Cherokee Nation business on their uh, non apology uh, way of advertising right now. We are going to be safe. This is how we're doing business. We're playing it for your safety. I really appreciate the message you're putting out there. You're leading in the market. And I understand in the short term that can cost some money. In the long time, it's going to save lives and it's going to make us the leader that we are. Very good. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yes, we, you know, and, and Chief Hoskin, of course, set the tone and uh, we have followed suit that. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's not a negotiation. We do require masks. We do not allow smoking. Uh, and uh, I think in the long run, we'll be rewarded for that. Hi, Chuck. It's Mary Baker Shaw. I just wanted to ask, what what is the status now on Arkansas? Um, Thank you for that. Uh, a week ago today, uh, the Arkansas Supreme Court, uh, we had petitioned the Arkansas Supreme Court to reconsider a decision made by a, by a trial court in, in Pulaski County, which is uh, Little Rock. Uh, the Supreme Court did, in fact, review that uh, uh, holding and overturned the holding. Uh, the issue at hand was 
uh, one of our uh, the applicant, the entity that we applied for, which was a uh, newly formed Arkansas LLC along with Cherokee Nation businesses for uh, some direction that we received from council at uh, the Arkansas uh, Racing Commission. Um, the lower court, uh, trial court uh, ruled that that entity didn't have the required um, uh, experience. And uh, the Supreme Court differed uh, and uh, overturned that. And so we are now just waiting for the Arkansas uh, Racing Commission to uh, reconvene and determine what they, how they would like to proceed. So currently we are one of, just to summarize, we are one of two applicants uh, and, uh, you know, look forward to uh, continuing to demonstrate why we are uh, the right uh, right choice for, for them. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, Chuck, we're gonna cut you loose. Okay, thank you all. Appreciate, Appreciate it very oh, much. I, I do want to announce, I am not going to ask him to come back for the council meeting. So if you're hanging on to any questions for the council meeting, go ahead and ask them now. Fair enough. Okay, we're good. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh-huh. Uh, next we have a report from our treasurer, Trey Linda Scott. Hello. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. Um, so, right on my report, like, so there's a couple other things I wanted to update you all on. Um, first, in, in good news, we now officially have all of our FY19 audit And we got unmodified payments for our school. So, all the audit. Okay, audit. Trey, we're having a little bit of trouble with your audio. Did you say you have all of your audit? Reports, is that what you said? Yes, yes. All the all, all of the audits are now complete and they have unmodified opinions. Awesome. Um, so we've got, we've got all clean audits for FY19. Um, and someday when, when things get maybe a little bit back to normal, I can uh, give you guys hard copies of those. But in the meantime, I'll, I'll email you guys a soft copy. We already emailed the CAFR and the CAFR, but now we have the full audit and the population audit to go with it. Um, I would also uh, like to let you guys know that my uh, staff, along with um, some other people throughout the Church Nation, and a couple of, couple of really nice uh, guys can help us with uh, setting up a website that we are going to be using. It's going to be uh, along the lines of a um, where the COVID money goes website, uh, it'll be a website that focuses on transparency for how we're spending the money, where we are uh, to date, what we spend. And uh, there'll also be a section on the website where we'll be putting up um, you know, brief summaries of all the programs that we're either, that are either new programs or expanded programs. Uh, so it can be a, a shop, a one stop shop where people can go and get uh, lots of good information. Um, so we are, we are uh, diligently working towards that, and uh, I think we're getting closer, and I hope to uh, have that up and running very soon. So, um, give a look out for that. I'm sure that we'll be working with you on the advertising when it does go up. Um, and last Friday, we filed um, our first report on the, uh, the coronavirus room fund. Uh, we got notification on July 2nd that we had you know, new um, reporting requirements from the Treasury ORG. And uh, we got the notification on the 2nd, and they were due on the 2nd, so we got those and uploaded. Um, the Treasury it was pretty simple this time around. Um, but having read the, the uh, regulations and all the requirements and everything, I think it's the uh, the next uh, reporting will be the quarterly report will be uh, 
Okay, Trey, your your audio is cutting out just a little bit. Is that um, an audit on the on how you're spending the COVID money? You're sending that to the Treasury Department. Is that what you said? Yes. I uh, so it was this one was just a really simple it was like one sheet kind of uh, throwing in the broad categories of how we how we spend the money. Uh, and it was just a, I emailed that to Treasury. Uh, Treasury is working on setting up a portal where we will be required to do like much bigger uh, uh, reporting and, and showing backup documents and everything. But that will be until later. In the uh, Councilor Nofire has a question for you. Hey, Trillian, I know I just stepped in, but uh, I sent, uh, I know last month I asked about the invoice from CNB. I didn't get a response by email on when I was going to receive that. I know you have the invoice and all the documents for the money that we sent them. I didn't know when I would be able to get a copy on that when I FOIA requested it. Uh, that FOIA is in process. It's under it's some of review and it's, uh, Deadline, what was that last part? I'm sorry, it's for what now? Uh, I think the deadline is not here yet. I think she said the FOIA is in review, it's in process. There, the deadline's when on that tray? Correct. We will get to you before the deadline. Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, sir. Councilor Shaw, I have your name written down, but I didn't mark it out. Was that from? Um, that Tuck Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. I'm sorry, I just didn't want to overlook you. Okay, does anybody else have questions for Trayla? All right. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Diane Kelly. Are you there? She gave up on us. She's there. Leg and feel it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mood is she in, Daryl? <laughs> Talk to us, Diane. <laughs> you probably have to unmute, Miss Kelly. I think you're well, muted. There you are. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. You can hear me now. Very good. Gotcha. Can you see me? Uh, yes. Look at you. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to say how excited and enthused we were when uh, the chief contacted us here in Career Services and asked us about uh, putting together some things that we were needing to get us over the pandemic. And if we were in crisis mode again this fall, what would we have to do to uh, take care of our clients? Uh, all of our staff that worked, worked away from the office. They worked from home. They worked in the office. Uh, some of us came in different times. We were all working, staying on top of our clients, and we didn't miss a beat. They still got paid. Uh, we made sure that as new people were added in TANF, they were paid. And then whenever we were asked about trying to come up with some things, um, we knew that our summer youth program was going to start late, and we were very uh, pleased to get uh, a half a million dollars for extending our summer youth employment program. We got $400,000 increase for the tribal training program, which was known as the day work program. Another million to uh, our adult work experience. We haven't had adult work experience in quite some time, and we know that there's people that are probably going to dry up their employment. They're not going to be able to find jobs, and this is going to help us to get their foot in the door so that some of these people can uh, at least make a living for their families. And we're also going to be putting uh, about a million in tuition assistance for people that are needing fast track uh, training. Uh, we worked with four of the career tech centers last week. Uh, we've got classes already starting in August and September. They'll go up through December. When they finish the program, then we will be working with them to get jobs. Uh, I think you all talked about a technology grant earlier in the education department. We will also have monies available to assist those for distance learning uh, so that anybody that is living in one of our rural areas, uh, we will be working with them if they're in one of our training programs. We're not opening the door for people to come in to get laptops. That's not what we're about. We're about anybody that's already in one of our health training programs or one of our IT programs. 
and they don't have the capabilities uh, for IT help and assistance, we will be able to work with them. And then we're uh, putting 50000 into expanding our GED program for distance learning. Uh, we're also working on our career readiness program. Uh, that was something that was instituted early on, and this will help us to expand some of those services. Uh, we're having a lot of phone calls about classroom training. Uh, somebody asked this morning if it was going to impact us. We're already being impacted by summer youth and vocational training. So this is nothing new. This just helps us to help that many more people in the 14 county area. And uh, we're adding additional staff to help with some of the load that we have right now. Uh, they're just going to work part time. Uh, we've got uh, a grant that we were fortunate enough to get funded. It's through the United States Department of Labor. It's a $3 million grant, and it is for national disaster recovery. Uh, it's an application that's going to allow us to work with clients for at least a year. It's a two-year grant. It's $3 million, and it's to train people on how to combat the COVID. So we'll be able to work with ELP and some of the other departments on some screening and uh, work with cleanup and various other things. Uh, we are vetting that uh, grant tomorrow. Uh, Shawna Miles, who has the opioid grant, is kind of heading that up right now. Uh, she may be heading it up for the next two years, and then again, somebody else may take it. Uh, we've got another opioid grant out there, and uh, we were contacted about that from the Department of Labor last week. So we think that we may get that money, and if we do, then she'll shift over there to do that. We've got a uh, another grant that's called Employment Recovery, so it's a free application for $12 million that we went after. And we have been asked about that by the Department of Labor. Normally, the Department of Labor will not contact you and ask you for additional information, or they won't call you and ask you about various things unless you're kind of in the running. So we feel real good, and we hope that maybe this time next month we can come back and say that we have changed one of those grants. Uh, I want to show you a vest, and I hope you can see it. Uh, Chuck. Smith was over at the Three Rivers Clinic, and Chuck asked me about, can you see this? Mm -hmm. It's a vest, and it's blue, it's world blue, it says Cherokee Nation for Services Office. Chuck said that he would like some sort of identification for the summer youth, the work experience, the day training people that we have there at the hospital and at the clinic here in Tahlequah, because it's so big, they wanted to have those people identified. We have ordered those vests for all of the workers that we have assigned to the hospital and to the clinic. Uh, then they came back and said, well, what about the other clinics? Uh, I wish somebody would drop that up early on, but if that's something that would help identify, we're going to get vests for those other clinics as well. Um, Chuck also wanted everybody to have a collared shirt, and he didn't want sweats or jeans, so for everybody that we're placing up their own work experience, we are going to support a service for them while they're working there at the health facility. And I will have to say, in fairness to our health department, a lot of the workers that we've sent up there in the past have got their foot in the door, and if they showed up for work on time, they showed up every day, and they proved to be a good employee. When they've had positions come out in the health department, it's been very good about employing our work experience and our day training people. So I just wanted to share that with you because I don't mind going out on the limb and getting these uh, clothes for the staff or our participants if it if I open the door for them to get a job. So that's what we're all about. In the way of economic development, I was hoping Chuck would talk about Tesla, but he didn't. Um, we assisted CNB uh, with a letter that the chief and the deputy signed off on. and. Uh, when the state was looking at Tesla to locate here in Oklahoma, they were looking at um, Texas as well. We're still in the running, and um, there is some tax benefits that they can get here in Oklahoma that they can't get in Texas. So uh, Chuck and his staff and our staff worked in conjunction with the chief's office to try to land the Tesla project here in Oklahoma. And we're still in the running, and I just wanted to share that with you because that's going to be a, a big, major undertaking if that does happen. Uh, this past week, uh, we were contacted by the State Department of Commerce. 
Uh, I know that Councilman Crittenton, Councilman Duncan, one brought up the AERT plant that was in Watts, Oklahoma. That has been purchased by a guy here in Oklahoma. I think maybe he may live on the border of Texas, but uh, there has been some contact made by the State Department of Commerce, and Hunter and I and some others are going up there to meet with the owner of the new company, and he's going to be hiring about 32 people, Canaan and uh, Sean. And as we get him more information, I'll share that with you. I don't know exactly when he's going to open up. I don't know when he's going to start recruiting, but he has made contact with us to help with the recruitment. So we'll have to get some people some jobs. Another thing is that so we were by Bill Langley and Joel. There is a customized efficiency trailer company that's looking at steel wells, and there has been some land that's been looked at to uh, build customized efficiency trailers, mobile homes. Uh, Bill contacted us about three weeks ago. We have not uh, made connection with the owner, but he is supposed to be coming to town very soon, and we'll let you know about that. Um, George Borman out at Salisaw contacted us. <coughs> last spring they were going to have the groundbreaking for the new Veterans Center there in Salisaw uh, because of the pandemic that was pushed back. Uh, in August they planned their annual Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development luncheon and the people that are going to be working on the Veterans Project will be in town. They will be there to present the rendering and all of the things that's going to go on with the Vet Center with the timeline. And this will be sometime in August and uh, I believe August the 26th, Daryl and EO and uh, Brian, because you all were there when we were working on this. And then in September, they're hoping to do their groundbreaking for the Vet Center. So these are some new things that have just happened here in the last several weeks. Uh, we are going to uh, have a recruitment job there with the city of Miami. And when we talked to Charlotte Howard, we're looking at regionalism. And we're also looking at Misty Bingham over in Benita, and then also looking at Donnie over at uh, Bro. We're going to do a virtual regional recruitment fair. It'll start in Miami a week later, a week and a half later with one to Benita, a week and a half later with one to Bro. And uh, we're real excited about this because we've never done this. And we know that there will uh, be a lot of people that will move from one town to the next to get uh, the jobs that they're interested in. Uh, we also are expanding our tarot operation. Uh, Tammy Hooper will be in Muscogee in our new Muscogee office a couple of times a month by Councilman Dobbins. She'll be working over there to get more people certified as tarot union on businesses. And then when we open up our new office in Pryor, Christine Rogers will be at the new Pryor office and she will be uh, helping to expand our efforts in the northern area. Uh, somebody called and asked about the tarot banquet. Right now it's still up in the air as to whether we'll have it. We'll make a decision sometime at the end of August. But we have sent out information about nominations. We will still give our tarot awards. And uh, we will also look at the fall for our golf tournament. But we're not really sure at this point in time. But I'll keep everybody abreast of that. Um, we are also looking at our new office in prior. Uh, two of the things that we asked for in our COVID was uh, two trailers uh, similar to the one that Northeast Tech and Indian Capital Technology has. They're mobile trailers, they're classroom trailers, and we can use them also for virtual drive-by recruitment fairs. You can take the classroom desk out and then we can use them for people to come by, pick up information about businesses and reps, they can drop off their resumes. And we're planning to do that with the trailers. One will be in the north, one will be in the south. We will have one here in Tahlequah and the other one will be in Pryor. And we'll move it around in the northern area and keep the other one down here in the southern area. We're also looking at two digital billboards. And our purpose in getting the billboards is because we have a lot of graduates who come out of the career tech centers, they come out of our business classes, our GED, we're not having a GED graduation but we're going to do something different and unique this year for our graduates, similar to what some of the high schools have done by posting the graduation uh, graduates on uh, Fence Road into town or out of town. 
and we're planning to do something similar to that with our GED this year. And we want the billboard so that we can focus on the spotlights of these students that are getting jobs, making good money. And we also want to have the digital billboards for announcing our variance recruitment fairs for a business, one of our general businesses is recruiting jobs, then we want to announce that. It'll be open for other things, but that's primarily what we're requesting and using it for. Are there any questions? How many cups of coffee is she? I don't know where I was. Say that again. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that we, we work at the whole 14 counties, not just not just here in Tallahassee, we go all the way up to Tulsa, Marlinville, South Tulsa, Tallahassee. We're doing all kinds of stuff all the time, and, and uh, we 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 appreciate all the support that we get from the chief and Secretary of State. And, and all of you council members because you all have been very supportive of everything we've done. We appreciate you. So I have one question and it is, are you hooked in with all of the municipal utility departments throughout the 14 counties for possible internships for the lineman training that you're doing? Uh, our instructor is a former Lake Region employee and yes, that's okay. one of the things that our instructor through Oklahoma State Tech does is he makes contact with all of the city municipalities as well as GRDA, okay. uh, PSO out of Muskogee, our rural electric companies to try to get areas for them to do their practicum. When they're in their practicum, that entity is paying them while they're there doing the practicum. We don't pay them. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay. Any, qu any questions for Diane? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Diane. Keep up the good work. <coughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Okay, I see Anna down there in the corner. Tell me something good. Well, you, you do have a copy of my report. Um, I bet I can be quicker than Diane was. <laughs> <laughs> you have a copy of my report. <laughs> we're saying that these small business loans are up. We have um, about $2.2 million approved so far this year. So, um, so the demand for the loans is up over the last couple of years um, for businesses. And um, we have given all of the um, businesses a um, opportunity to request a deferral of three month payments. Um, and uh, and so and those are actually just going to be tacked on to the end of the loan. It's not something that they're going to have to come up with. Um, so other than that, we just finished closing out the taxes, which we talked about in the last meeting. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. We're working on the hall for that. It'll be it'll be very different this year, but it'll be it'll be good. Yep. Okay. Anything for Anna? All right. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Okay, that brings us down to our consent items on the um, tarot certifications. We make a motion for the day be approved. Second. second. Motion and a second for the tarot approvals. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Community assistance. Gail is in the room. Okay, there was a new sheet given out. Gail is going to take any additions that you have. So if anybody has any additions that aren't on the sheet, <coughs> wait now or wait till next month. Uh, yes, Councilor Crittenden. I was just going to make sure, Gail, did you find Kane's thing we were doing together that got on there? The booster club? Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 It's on there. Then I had a story about Gail on. No. <laughs> 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 okay, anybody else have any addition to community assistance? Make a motion to be approved. Uh, oh. Councilor Shambaugh has party to the Did party. you get the Oaks Family Support down? Yes. Okay, I just didn't see it on there. It's at the very bottom, next okay. to the last. And there was one on mine uh, that was out of my district, but I can get with you after this. Okay. Make a motion to be approved. Second. 
have a motion and a second to approve community assistance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, we did get a new law enforcement sheet. Uh, looks like there was one addition for Bowling Springs. Where is it? Got a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve law enforcement. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, the roads should be a list in the book. There is. I'm sure everybody looked at their stuff. So, Rex? Uh, make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve the roads. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, sports teams. Make a motion to be approved. Second. Motion and a second on the sports teams. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Looks like there were a few new livestock things, Junior. Make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second on livestock. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Everybody take a look at your special projects just for your own uh, Edification, I guess. Uh, there's no old business. New business is Legislative Act. J.D.? This is an act amending Legislative Act 15-19 authorizing comprehensive operating budget for fiscal year 2020. Water was in the current emergency at the Fed and a Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Are there any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. Explanation, please. There we go. <laughs> Okay. Um, so announcement, we do have a tentative um, budget hearing today starting on August 17th. I don't know that that's set in stone yet, but that's kind of what we're looking at. The next meeting is scheduled for August 27th at 3. Any motion to adjourn? I Would you announce that we're going to go straight into our council meeting and get over within 15 minutes? We are going to go straight into our council meeting, for those of you that didn't hear speaker, um, and get that over with. So, uh, all those in favor of adjournment from ENF? Any opposition? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.